till I suffocate Very quick to agitate Concentrate till I rate I'm irate In a state my confidence Is a trait Success is My motherfucking fate In the modern world, intelligence seems to be a highly sought after and very wanted trait. Everyone wants to be viewed as smart or at the very least above average, which is actually statistically impossible. This type of intelligence tends to lean towards wanting to be the smartest person in the room or more simply just knowing a lot of stuff. This of course is very valuable and has its merits, but there is another type of intelligence which I deem to be more important if you want to live a happy and fulfilling life and that is emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence, otherwise known as emotional quotient or EQ, is the ability to understand, use and manage your own emotions in a positive way to reduce stress. With the ability to communicate effectively, empathize with others, overcome challenges and diffuse conflicts. In effect, having high emotional intelligence implies that you have very good people skills and tend to be a very compassionate person. I know someone that's quite like that. Unlike the more stereotypical type of intelligence that I mentioned before, this type of intelligence implies that you're making the other person feel like the smartest person in the room. One of the best books that I've ever read is called How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. And despite it being released in 1936 and having a little bit of a weird name, it's extremely helpful in developing the skills to become emotionally intelligent. After reading the book, I'd say that in a nutshell, the important thing to remember is to try and put yourself in the other person's shoes and see their perspective and also treat the person as if they're important, as, as if they were special. But you have to do that in a genuine way. From a spiritual perspective, ideas from Buddhism promote living compassionately as it's the best way to live since it's creating peace in within the self and within the wider world. On this note, there is a character which pretty much displays traits of high emotional intelligence with compassion and, and love for everyone, even his enemies. And that character is Kamado Tanjiro from Demon Slayer. And in this video, we'll look at how you can cultivate compassion and love for everyone just like him. I'd say that the root of Tanjiro's kindness and compassion derives from his family and his love for them. The way he treated his younger siblings formed his model on how he would treat others by being non-judgmental, caring, and making them feel valued. After his family was massacred by demons and only his sister Nezuka remained in a demon form, Tanjiro vowed to stop at nothing to restore his younger sister's humanity as she is all he has left in the world. He treats his friends Inosuke and Zenitsu like his younger brothers and shows his enemies mercy and compassion despite what sins they've committed. And here is the first learning point. In order to be compassionate, we must have empathy and simply just caring about other people. And like the book I mentioned earlier says, we need to imagine ourselves in that person's shoes. If we had grown up with their personality, their circumstances, their upbringing, would we have done anything differently? It's about being non-judgmental and seeing the qualities of a person rather than their shortcomings. This actually leads to some of the most adorable scenes in the show as well, by the way. When you criticize someone personally, it tends to have the opposite effect to the desired outcome. On paper, by pointing out someone's flaws, the goal is to raise their awareness so that they can work out, so that they can work that thing out and improve. However, most of the time, people are already aware of these issues, at least at a subconscious level, and further scrutiny only intensifies these negative emotions, so you're not really helping at all. Instead, by showing love and compassion and believing that the person is doing the best that they can do in the moment, you're actually promoting better emotions and reinforcing the idea that they can change and they can improve and they can just be better. By encouraging them that they're doing a great job, they will just continue doing that. Tanjiro really understands this concept and explains why a lot of the characters take a deep liking towards him, even the people who are supposed to be his enemies. My favourite example and one scene I found quite emotional was after the battle with the Suzumi demon, I think that's how you say it, the, the drum guy. <laughs> The other guy, before becoming a demon, wanted to be acknowledged for his writing ability and manuscripts, but received no encouragement at all and was told to give it up. Those manuscripts were present in the battle, which Tanjiro avoided damaging, whilst also appreciating Kogai's work before he died, making him leave the world 
happy. There are countless examples of things like this in Demon Slayer, and despite it being a show about fighting demons, there are a lot of emotional moments. In battle, most of Tanjiro's motivation comes from his burning desire to save his sister and restore her humanity, and this propels him to unbelievable feats of strength. Not only can having love and compassion make their lives better, but it can also make us stronger too. Frederick Nietzsche says, he who has a strong enough why can bear almost any how. So this might be a cue to reevaluate your goals. What are you striving for? Is it helping other people? Is it really going to benefit society or anyone else? Or even just for the ones that you love? Tanjiro rarely gets too down on himself because of this, since he's almost never focused on himself, and he's always looking to help others. This is explained in Dale Carnegie's other work, How to Stop Worrying and Start Living. He says, why will doing a good deed every day produce such astounding efforts on the doer? Because trying to please others will cause us to stop this thinking of ourselves. The very thing that produces worry and fear and melancholia. Melancholia. This suggests that living with more love and compassion, like Tanjiro, can actually make us less neurotic. Not that, you know, there's enough benefits already. But what is the best way to start doing this? It sounds simple but vague. We need a practical solution, a way to do this, to build this supposed empathy muscle. Alfred Adler, the founder of individual psychology, used to say to his melancholic patients, you can be cured in 14 days if you follow this prescription. Try to think every day how you can please someone. It will take a conscious effort to place yourself in someone's world and determine what it is that they need and to deliver it to them without any expectation of reward or even gratitude. Tanjiro is like this, he performs act of kindness for kindness sake, an example of true altruism. I think I'll end this video with some quotes from the Dalai Lama, as I believe that there are a lot of themes from Buddhism embedded into this show, and Tanjiro as a character. From my own limited experience, I have found that the greatest degree of inner tranquility comes from the development of love and compassion. The more we care for the happiness of others, the greater our own sense of well-being becomes. Cultivating a close, warm-hearted feeling for others automatically puts the mind at ease. This helps remove whatever fears or insecurities we might have and gives us the strength to cope with any obstacles we encounter. It is the ultimate source of success in life. If you want others to be happy, practice compassion. If you want to be happy, practice compassion. So remember guys, having compassion and love for others won't just make their lives better, but it will make your life better too. And this was how to cultivate love and compassion for everyone like Kamado Tanjiro. I've been Sir Lance, and have a great day.